from Vamnana Fighter. Today we have the lovely B talking with us. The purpose of this chat is just to connect more with our customers and get to know them a little bit deeper, especially during this time where everything just feels a bit more disconnected. So B, if you don't mind, could you please introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, my name is B. I'm working as an assistant manager of social media content for shopping mall. Imagine creating content for malls, but at the same time, it cannot be looking like your neighborhood mall. My hobby is taking photos, dancing, working out, cooking, traveling. That's pretty much about me. Cool. So how did your fitness journey begin? I would say three years ago. Uh, when I start working for a local sportswear brand, mm. but then the re- that they hire me because oh, they want to do more content instead of just like promo, hard selling. I have to wear the products and go over to the gym in KL. That's how I get uh, start getting active at the gym. I would say I'm pretty active at classes, group classes. I first started not like enjoy because it's very new for me, right? Try everything. Pick the nice one or the one that I like and then I will stick to it. So before this, you didn't have any exposure to fitness. It was this that really made it more part of your life then? I would say I used to dance a lot uh, when I was high school. I danced like Chinese contemporary dance. It's a very heavy training. I already know like I'll get it about what's getting active when you go to college. We just don't have the idea of go to the gym. Yeah. The gym is so far away from us. And slowly, after the school life, and then start working, you know, mm. you just don't want to get fat. Like, oh, mm-hmm. should I answer? Should I just move a bit my body? You know, just do here and there, but you know nothing about fitness. So nowadays, then what do you do then? I do still uh, book classes through class pass to join a group classes like the Zoom workout. But recently, I started this fitness schedule program with one of my Pilates instructor. Mm. So we come out with this workout schedule like Monday is about upper body and then day two is about heat. Day three is about total body. Before the cases that serious, I'll make sure I have to walk every day because when you do the strength and the heat, right, you are like mm. pressuring your body so much. So walk is one of the way to stay active in a relaxed way. I don't do it that often anymore because hitting 10k steps is it's really hard, hard than <laughs> I thought. It's hard in Malaysia because it's so hot as well. I don't know. mind the sun at all, but it's just so hot. Like even I walk to my grocery store, yeah, it's only like two, three k. Yeah, I give up. <laughs> what about at home? You can just pace around, but then uh, it does. It does different. I, I try before, like just walking on a mat back and forth, following a YouTube video. Good for the five minutes. I hit around five k, and I'm not doing it again because it's just so boring. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. Would you say that uh, throughout your whole journey of you know getting into fitness, do you make a lot of mistakes, and what did you learn from them? Ah. Yep, I made all the mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I started, right, it's more yeah. like trying new thing, right? Because I don't know what I like. Yeah. Just try that. Like, I don't know if I like boxing. Mm. I don't know if I like boxing with heat. It's so different. Mm. Like, I don't know if I only like weight, but I don't know how to start with weight. Is it heat with weight? Like, there's so much combo classes out there, right? And then you started to, you know, become very calculative. Yeah. Am I doing this to burn more calorie? Then over this, right. that's how it become a bit toxic lah, because mm. you started to do it just to burn your calorie. This is so wrong. I think everyone experienced this, especially like girls, right? If you're working out to burn calorie, it's already so wrong. This is very toxic, but I cannot help because I still look at my calorie wash band. Am I like burning enough of calorie, this and that? You know, going workout and gym, it just maybe 30% of your fitness journey, right? Because 70% is coming from the diet. So diet is another big part. I'm a very adventurous person. I experience a lot of diet pattern. The, the popular one, the intermittent fasting, the 60 hour, 20 hours, keto diet, low carb diet, the paleo. I think I try everything. When I scroll the internet, they say, oh, the best is do not eliminate any food group. The balanced diet is the key that keep you for a longer run because you don't want to do it just for like a what? 14 days challenge, a 30 days yeah. challenge, and then you go back to the normal and then you just eat whatever you want again. And then it slowly leads to, I learn more about intuitive eating. So I would say I try to go into that direction more than just like macro focus. Because mm. if you learn diet, right, it will kind of like fuck your mind a lot. Yeah. Like, I cannot see the food the same anymore. Whatever yeah. I see, 
is protein, fat, and carbs. I always label food the good food and the bad food, which is mm. so bad. But my baseline is I don't take sugar and fried stuff. This is what I always stick to. Mm. And it's also coming from my Chinese family culture, like my mm. friends. Mom and my dad always talk to me, do not eat fried stuff. So I always have this idea like, okay, I don't eat fried stuff. In the beginning, you know, I try different diet pattern, right? Because I want to lose weight so bad. I yeah. just want to be skinny because I always feel I'm so big to anyone, to my sister. I always look like a giant. And then it's, this is the beginning phase. And then slowly, you know, you cannot keep up, right? The, this kind of diet pattern. Because yeah. you st- it's you to, you know, binge eating, emotional eating, eating disorder or disorder eating. When I feel stressed at work, I would go to the fridge and binge on nuts. I don't eat cakes or pizza or burger, but I just love to eat nuts. nuts. This is a very, very bad habit because when you feel stressed, like before I want to start a task, I would go to the fridge, eat first, to snack first, to munch on it first. And then I still procrastinate, meaning all this binge eating, it doesn't help me. To, to be productive on my job. I would say now I eat everything, but just plan very mindfully. I want to make sure that every meal that I eat is something that I want. But you know, this is also not a healthy, I would say. You're just so not relaxing about food. All you think about is just food. Yeah. And when you go out, you will check on people's body. Oh, she looks okay. What she eats every day has become so toxic lah. At what point are you at now with your relationship with food? Would you say you are relatively good point or would you okay. say you are still trying to figure it out? I would say in the middle of figuring it out, sometimes like at my lowest point of my life, like why I have to think about food so much. Sometimes I just don't. I'm still practicing myself. It's still on my journey to healing, but I'm still at the very, very, very beginning of the part. Because I know it's going to be taking years, right? It cannot be yeah. healed in two months or three months. I'm still learning, lah, I, would, I would say. I think it would also help to kind of accept that part of yourself that food is important to you. Which yeah, is why yeah. it's so present in your life because it, it means something, which is not a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing to have quite a food-focused life, which is why you get people who are foodies, you know, chefs as well included. Because I have a huge, huge, huge passion about doing food styling and then food color, it just inspired me so much. It's also a thing that making me happy. You're talking about how you've been having struggles with dieting. I'm sure this has a lot to do with your own body image. How is your self-image like currently and how was it like before you even started dieting? To be honest, it's really bad because I have a very bad relationship with my body image because right now, I'm at my heaviest. I cannot really feed my old clothes. I mean, I can feed, but it's so fucking tight that mm. I know my body has changed. i just in a denial of accepting that people change, body change is so normal and it happens to everyone. But I would say it's pretty tough for me, especially for my mental health. To a point, I just refuse to look back at my old photos. You know, during quarantine, right? Your yeah. friends going to see you like, oh, the past trip that you guys been. I'm just so scared to look at all those photos. I know I don't look the same anymore. And I know I have this huge fear of getting fat because I keep thinking back, why am I every day living in a fear of, I don't get fat? I think it's partly because coming from my family, I'm the youngest. But I also have the biggest frame and bone. My sisters and my mom, they are just so skinny. So it don't make me feel good. You know when a relative, they will just comment you, Oh, are you the biggest sister? It just make me feel bad and I don't know why. I think all of this is just coming from the comment from people around me. Like right here and there, here and there. And started to affect me. Then my mental health maybe is not strong enough to like, oh, I don't care about what comments that you give me. I'm not trying to spread the negativity here. Like, oh, I have this bad body image here. I just want to tell the truth Mm -hmm. because it's really not easy to heal a damaged mental health when you have bad relationship with food and your body image at the same time. So I just want to tell every girls out there that you are not alone because I'm suffering it. I'm not sure if this is mistake because I learned from mistake, right? If I never yeah. encountered this problem, I would not know, oh, this is what I need to going through. Do you feel like it's more so to do with what beauty standards exist around Malaysia? So, yeah, so in the small town, everyone, the beauty standard is skinny yeah. and fair skin. 
skinny and fast kid. Yeah, yeah, it's common, right? You, the hardest girl in high school is always the fairer skin with the yeah. long straight hair. When I was growing up in my small town, right, I'm the tennis girl, and then I have like curly baby hair, and of course, I'm not the skinniest. But it got so much better when I moved to KL because when you move to a bigger city, there's so much different beauty standard. Yeah. The one type. So I'm like, okay, I don't look too bad when I have tan skin. I don't look too bad when I don't have skinny chopstick legs. So of course, having this variety of the beauty standard, of course, is soothe me and it make me feel more comfortable in my own skin. So I assume now you don't really try to fit into a particular box. You're kind of slowly trying to embrace. Okay, I still have body goals. Have. To be honest, and I'm still on my way to reach my body goals, right? But I would not have uh, body goals that is impossible for me. Like, oh, I want a long, straight, canogenic legs. I have my body goals that maybe it's achievable and doable for me. Of course, I'm not 100% super happy with my, my what my bodies are right now. How do you think you will feel like once you've attained your body goals? You know, I, I saw YouTube, they say you just never get satisfied once you hit your body goals. And then you want more. And then you started to feel like, oh, your skin is not good enough. It can never fulfill you, right? I learned to have the balance of enjoying what my bodies are right now, but also try to be a better self. If I can be a better shape of my self, of my life, why not I go for it? It's something also beyond how you look then. It's more to do with a self-esteem issue than more of a body issue oh, when you really do go into it. Yes, it's definitely oh. a self-esteem thing. There's one day I wake up, oh, I feel I'm not too bloated. I feel okay. The next day, you just like, you don't even want to look at the mirror. Yeah. And, and I feel like so much of, uh, you know, this body positivity movement going on mm-hmm. now. I think a lot of it is not so much to do with how you look. It's more to do with how much you accept yourself as who mm-hmm. you are. Do you feel like you practice this yourself? Do you have any tips for those people who are looking to love themselves a bit better? Because we consume a lot of content every day, right? Like, no matter from TikTok, Instagram, yeah. and YouTube. I always looking for different content of the YouTuber that is not just one body size. More on the chubby side, they mm. also the very fitness gym red side. They having like different skin color, different hair. Mm. So that's how I keep up my knowledge about learning body positivity. They just exist in different size. People have just like very skinny, sharp jawline, but they still can have a big body, right? See. When I look at the content, I want to focus on more their personality instead of just, oh, she's pretty, I want to follow her and see her every day. I will try to shift my focus to the content itself. I think that's very helpful, especially for... Um, uh, when it can also apply to real life as well, right? When you meet someone, Hi. instead of just focusing on how they look, you just focus on what their presence is like, you know, how, how they make you feel, their personality, instead of yeah. just being, oh, they're fat, oh, they're skinny, oh, I look no. better than them, oh, oh no, like, better than me. Stop comparing yourself to any people, not yeah. just the people from social media, also the people next to you, because I always comparing myself with my sister, yeah. which is so toxic, and I shouldn't do that. And one more question, because yep. you are someone who works in social media. You're constantly having to see what other people are posting about themselves. Do you feel like it affects your mental health? I think it affects everyone's health, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you say they are not affected, they, are, they, they, lie. Lie. <laughs> they laugh a lot. I definitely spent a lot of time on social media, especially Instagram, but it's not really for my personal account. It's mostly for my work. Content creation is meant to be fun, right? And it became your work. It's also playing a big part of your life. It's like literally everything that you do every day, it has to be like content first. If you stop getting inspired, you don't know what to do next. So what I try to do is during the weekend, when I happen, you know, to meet my friends at the grocery or something, I just don't touch my phone at yeah. all. Of course, I still take photos. I'm not so like, oh, I need to upload this to story to tell everyone I'm eating this amazing food. I don't do it anymore. I don't really check on people I use story because you're really time consuming, right? When you scroll, you just never stop. But I would say now I'm like 200% focused on myself and it's such a release and relax for your mental health.
And do you have any tips for others on how to balance the use of social media, especially during lockdown, you know, when everyone's constantly on their phones nowadays? I always on a phone with my close friend. You don't need yeah. much, just one or two. That's how I stay connected with my friend without, you know, checking on the social media. Just talk. Mm. I can talk good two hours phone with my with my friend because I'm living alone, right? I don't, I'm not living with my family. It's so important to talk like what I'm doing now with you, one of the good deeds that I do for myself today. Before we wrap it up, I have one last question to ask you. What was the most recent moment that has made you happy? So, it's something not really about fitness or my health or food. It's something about my work. So, I have this designer. She said a big thank you to me. Like, she showed how much she appreciate my help on her design project. She told me that oh, I taught her a lot. I think this is the best feeling ever because I feel like I'm a proud mom. No. So I am not anymore. I'm 30 and I'm capable to influence the good thing to the people around me and mm. it's at work. It's made me feel even more proud because it makes us a good team and we produce a nice work. Yeah, I feel like that ends this whole segment very well as well because it also goes to show that it's not just something, you know, yeah. physical that will make you happy. It is experiences and those around you that can bring joy. So yeah, thank you so much, B, for coming on to this. I had a lovely time having a chat with you. You are a very energetic and very, you know, go-getter kind of person. And yeah, Hello. it was very nice to get to know you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.